Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. I'm Stephanie West. I'm a licensed counselor here in the state of Michigan. Today I'm going to try to be as concrete as possible, but the idea is abstract in the sense of we're talking about uh, the mind-body connection and how as we think through things, we can actually kind of um, help propel certain outcomes potentially just by our belief systems. And so I'm listening to the book. I think it's The Mindful Body is what it's called. It underpins a lot of what where the research is trending with mental health and with uh, like the uh, body, mind and spirit integration. And it also is just going through kind of historical research over the last kind of 30 years of understanding just how integrated the mind and the body actually is. And as she's talking through uh, like anecdotally some of her research, I'm finding myself uh, reflecting and saying, Steph, how does this affect you? What can you do differently? And so one of the examples she gives is uh, they, they put together this experiment where um, subordinates are listening to um, information about like colds and then they're surrounded with sensory cues for colds. So there's, um, you know, there's chicken soup and there's tissues and there's a bunch of kind of um, environmental pieces that indicate a cold. And then they do a follow-up about a week later with these um, with these people participating in the research, and like 30 to 35 percent of them actually have colds. Now they did different styles of research like this, so it's not just this piece in isolation. But they're talking about the idea that we can really kind of set ourselves up for living something out or for um, expressing something within us just by thinking about it, being surrounded by it, making assumptions about it, things like that. And it really is fascinating research. So I'm asking myself, okay, what does this mean about you, Steph? And what I've been watching is the stories that I tell myself about things that they aren't inevitable, but I perceive them to be inevitable. So yesterday, um, I typically wouldn't do a 13 hour clinical day. Yesterday, it just happened to fall that way because I had certain people had to get on the schedule sooner rather than later. And so I was working 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and I had a 3 to 4 p.m. break. And typically what happens, at least when I uh, talk to myself through story, typically the three to four o'clock break would really derail me because I like have the stamina built up and then this hard stop and then you have to like rally energy and go for another six hours, which I can do it, but typically I would experience a slump in energy. And so I find myself the day before thinking like, oh man, tomorrow's going to be such a long day. You're going to be so tired by the end of it. Your last couple of clients are, are going to get really kind of subpar therapy because you're going to be so exhausted. Oh, I, I didn't get enough sleep. And this compounding story keeps unfolding. But as I'm listening to this book, I'm saying to myself, Steph, knock it off. You don't know what tomorrow's energy is going to be. You have, you know, built up stamina. You've done this before. You're very good at what you do. You're very capable and, and you've had good rest, you know, earlier in the week. You'll be fine. And if you're not fine, you'll figure it out. So instead of making assumptions about my day, I started talking back to myself and saying, Steph, we don't know that that's true. Knock it off. And I found that by the end of the day yesterday, not only was my stamina and my endurance good, I was really alert in my eight o'clock and nine o'clock sessions. And I really just, I didn't miss stride at all. And this presupposition that my three to four o'clock was going to be some sort of, you know, tank and energy and I'd have to rally. That's my story that I tell myself. So yesterday when I tried to disrupt or dismantle that story and said, well, maybe that's true, but let's just send it. Let's just see what happens. You know, do A, B and C during your break and you'll probably have pretty good energy overall. I started telling myself a different story or I started inviting in a different explanation or a different way to approach or think about things. And that's what I want to invite you into today. What does it mean to look at our stories and say, is that true or is that story? Am, am I making this up and then I'm going to live it out? Because guys, we love being right. We love generating theory. Oh, today's going to be a bad day. And then we reflect, oh, I was right. I knew today was going to be a bad day. We love doing that. But how many times do we live into some pre-declarative that we've given instead of just seeing things as they are or meeting the day as it is and kind of going with the ebbs and flows? That's what I want to encourage you in today. Think through what are the stories that I tell myself and how might I be kind of setting myself up for, you know, less than ideal outcomes because I'm committed to seeing things a certain way or I'm committed that things are going to turn out a certain way. 
instead of just like, hey, let's send it. Let's see what happens today. So think about that today. What stories might you be conjuring up and then might we be living them out? Can we disrupt them by saying, hey, let's just stay present in our day. Let's just give the day what we've got and let's see what happens.